I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, you might have guessed by the intro, I'm going to talk about dinoflagellates. What I'm going to discuss at the beginning of the video, first of all, I'm going to start to talk about actually what is it and what causes it to actually gain the population of them where you see that brown type of algae on the substrate. And then further on, I'll go into it to see and I'll explain how to eradicate uh, this organism. But before we start, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and let's go ahead and take a deep dive and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank. I'm focused at the center lower part of the substrate uh, so you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to dinoflagellates. As you notice, it's like dark brown towards black patches. Now, uh, this is what I found out. I know that I've done a video of this way back, but this would be like a 2.1, I guess, like an update more, a little more detail. Okay, first of all, dinoflagellates is a single-celled organism, or in other words, a microorganism, with what they call two flagella, occurring in large numbers in marine plankton. Now, also... Dinoflagellates are an important group of phytoplankton that produce oxygen in marine and freshwater aquariums. Now, they do tend to create toxins. So that's why you have to have it in control because if it, I mean, this is like borderline, but when it does get out of control, it could actually, you know, kill your, your cleanup crew and so on. Now, usually all aquariums do have dinoflagellates, but are considered uh, to be dominant, which is why you can see them. Now, what I mean by that is all tanks, all tanks have dinoflagellates, but they're kept in, in check because of the bacteria, the good beneficial bacteria. Now, of course, you don't see it, but trust me, all tanks, uh, saltwater reef aquariums, all tanks have cyano and have dinos. The problem is that when it gets out of control because of what I'm going to talk about next, then that's when the population of them, they increase and that's when you actually see them because they're a little bit uh, out of control. Now, they become visible especially during daylight, when your nutrients, in other words, PO4 and NO3, are not traceable, producing less beneficial bacteria, which is what I was talking about, which is what keeps them in control and become non-visible during the night in which they become free-floating. Uh, what, what I mean by that is that, uh, for instance, they uh, this micro organism they actually feed from light so during the day when the lights go on then what happens is that's when you see them more in, in the substrate but if you notice when the lights go down and like during the night if you go back to the tank and with a flashlight or you just look at it you're gonna say hey wait a minute it actually it disappeared because at night during the day since they feed from light from the light source then they populate, but then at night they become free floating, and that's why you don't see them. They they go actually to the um, water column. Now that being said, uh, when you have an outbreak like this, then when it comes to lighting, if your if your lights are controllable, I would say keep them below fifty. Like for instance. This tank, I'm, I'm, I'm running the XR15 Pro, the fifth generation, but uh, I had it at 65 of total brightness. Well, with this occurring, I went ahead and I brought it down to 45 because actually the blue spectrum that penetrates the water that actually feeds the, the, the corals, the, the photosynthesis that the, the corals feed on, this also feeds. So what you got to do is bring down 
the uh, light so when your blue spectrum kicks in it's not way way so high because you know let's let's face it all of these tanks are not that high they're 24 inches high or 30 and uh, that's that's about it and then the blue lights are the ones that really feed the corals and in conjunction would also feed and increase the population of the dinos. So, as I said, to uh, get rid of these, or to lower the population, of course, like I mentioned, is to lower your, your, your lights. Now, once you do that, what happens is that you have to make sure that you bring up your PO4 and NO3, because, like I was, uh, you know, if... If those uh, levels are non-detectable, are close to zero, the population of uh, the dinos will increase. Now, to keep them in check is the beneficial bacteria. But if you have low uh, non-traceable PO4s or NO3s, the population of your beneficial bacteria is not is there, but it's not that that high. So it cannot keep them in check. It cannot uh, consume them. So the object is to actually bring up your levels. Now, in my case, I've been checking and checking. But what I was doing is I was, because since I had, if you follow me, you'll notice that way back I had an outbreak of Aptasia. So I started to lower my nutrients because of the amount of Aptasia that I had. And then I was feeding my fish every other day. Well, upon doing that, I did notice that my, my PO4 was in check, but my nitrates, the NO3, they started to go down, down, and they bottom out. They actually uh, became non-detectable. Uh, and that's what I think actually caused the outbreak of the dinoflagellants because I didn't have enough population of beneficial bacteria to, to actually eat uh, these dinos. So because of that, they went ahead and they uh, started to uh, populate more and that's what I have now, which is the actual outbreak. So what did I do? Again, like I was saying, I started to feed more my fishes. Now I'm feeding them daily in conjunction with the Brightwell Aquatics uh, Neo Nitro because my phosphates are in check, but my, nitro, my, my nitrates went completely down. So that's what actually happened that I believe uh, actually caused them to actually do an outbreak. Now, another thing that you can do to get rid of them is try to, to remove them as much as you can. You can do it by siphoning uh, your substrate or, you know, when you do a water change or like use the turkey baser and try to remove them as much as you can. And also use a UV, which I also have a, a UV on 24-7. And when they become free floating at night, then the UV will, will actually catch them and then kill them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it educational and fun. But before I close, I thought I mentioned in conjunction with feeding more the, the fish, I also use these products by Brival Aquatics. For nitrates, I use the Neo Nitro, which would be in conjunction with feeding more the actual fish to raise your nitrates. And then when it comes to phosphates, I use the neophos, which would be also in conjunction with feeding more the fish. So I hope you liked the video. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Until next time. Bye-bye.